You are tuned in to Kids in the Pit. You can do better. Race, race. Hey guys, it's Gabe from the Kids in the Pit podcast. Today I'm joined by Geert Vanderveld from Shinehalud. So you're joining me all the way from Spain, right? Correct. I'm here in uh, my office at work. I work for a company called Chess.com, and there's a department of Chess.com called Chessable, which I'm the head of. And I'm in Barcelona right now in my office. We have this nice little booth that I can uh, borrow sometimes to take calls. So that's where I'm I'm, I'm zooming in from. So you said Chess.com? Yep. Nice. I actually use that sometimes. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So if you're playing on Chess.com, then you're playing on the... uh, on the app that uh, the company that I work for uh, has created and, and and work hard to make better. That's cool. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So you're, did you grow up in Spain? No, no, no. I'm from originally from the Netherlands, mm. uh, but uh, I moved here a few years ago for work. Nice. So how, how far, like how far away from, uh, U.S. are you like what? Uh, how far ahead are you in time? Um, six hours. There's a six-hour time difference between us. So, uh, yeah. I'm, I, it's five fifteen in the afternoon for me. So it must be eleven fifteen for you. Yeah. Uh, so that's the time difference right now. Because the the time zones isn't it like you uh UK Ireland and like Portugal and Spain. That's like six, and then the rest of Europe. Most of the rest of Europe is uh, five, right? Portugal and the UK are in the same time zone, and Spain is in your on European time. So Spain, oh, okay. Amsterdam, Paris, Berlin are all in the same time zone. So, so you're five or six hours ahead? Six. Okay. So wait, is, uh, is the UK five? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was thinking. I was thinking it was going the other other way. That makes sense. So Port- Portugal and and the UK are five. Okay. Yeah. 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 Thought it was like that. I was like, yeah, I don't know. So, for those that don't know, uh, what do you do in Chai Halud? I scream. Nice. Yeah. So, um, I heard there's like a really cool story of how you joined Chai Halud. Can you uh, tell us about it? Do you want the long or the short version? Uh, either. Okay. The short version is I went to one of their shows. Uh, I was definitely one of their biggest fans. And after the show, I talked to Matt Fox, the, the founder of the band and, and main guitar player and songwriter. And, yeah. uh, and then, um, I asked him if I could come on tour with them. He said, uh, sure. I don't think he actually expected me to follow up on that. And then I did follow up on that. And, uh, in about a week's time, I went from following them around, uh, at shows to uh, joining them as a vocalist and eventually being the sole vocalist on that first European tour of theirs in 1999. Wow. What happened to their uh, other singer? Yeah. So so Chad Gilbert, uh, keep in mind, Chad Gilbert, I think maybe he was an adult or maybe he wasn't. I'm not sure. Cause Chad was very young when he recorded vocals for Shia Lude. I think he was 15 on their first EP, 16 on their debut album. And I don't know if the tour happened right around the time that maybe he was turning 18 or not. But the main thing was that he had that band and still does, I guess, New Found Glory. And they had just recorded their first EP. They signed with like a like a sub label of a major label and they had all these opportunities to tour and play. And so he was just done. He didn't want to do Shia Lude alongside. That's at least the story that I know. And so he quit. Uh, to focus on newfound glory, which uh, you know he had a lot has a lot of success with, so I guess a good good decision on his part. But uh, he did uh, bow out of that tour like six weeks, seven weeks, or something before, and kind of left Chai Lude without a singer. So they found someone they thought that could do it. Turned out that person wasn't in the end so great, and so they did the first few shows of that European tour with Matt Fletcher, who at the time was the new guitar player uh on vocals and matt now is the the bass player um and, oh, he, and yeah. He, so yeah so 
He's, he's uh, so still... Matt, yeah, he's still involved. I think he uh, he's not like the touring band member anymore or anything. Yeah. He's got kids and family and etc. But uh, yeah, so Matt Fletcher was doing vocals and he was losing his voice. And so at the show in the Netherlands that I saw, there was only one guitar player, Matt Fox. Matt Fletcher was not playing guitar. He was just on vocals. So it was kind of a, you know, minimal version of Shy Halud. And they had Andrew Gormley um, of Kiss a Goodbye on drums filling in. The whole band was the kind of like a mix of of last minute recruited people or new members joining. And it was a very um, incomplete version of Shy Halud. And, and what was cool is during that tour, we kind of transformed the back the, the band back into a really good live band uh, yeah. as we were going. And so it was, it was, cause eventually I ended up being the, the sole vocalist, but there is a video out there on YouTube, which I found of my very first show on vocals. And it was actually together with Matt Fletcher. So we had two vocalists, one guitar player, one bass player and one drummer at that show. Wow. That's pretty cool. So did you sing the whole set or did you sing like a few songs for that show? I did the whole set start to finish Sick. yeah so what shy Lude albums or what shy Lude album or albums did you uh sing on i only did one album which uh which is called that within blood ill tempered and it's the red did, one right that's the red one yep yeah, with the yeah. snake the, the yeah. torso the like oh, the then... sorry what? What? oh the like the names are so long i can't even remember them i say like the the red one, the the like uh, I know misanthropy. Is it called misanthropy? Yeah, misanthropy pure, right? That's an that's album. the next. Yeah, that's the next album. Yeah, but I like I can't remember the names because they're so they're super long. Yeah, I think that's every shy alludes uh, uh, you know, obstacle is that uh, the lyrics and uh, the song titles can be very wordy, and yeah. um. You know that's that's what that's Matt Fox for you. He he loves the the written word and he and he loves the penmanship and and uh, he he likes to uh, you know challenge his fans with uh, with interesting song titles. Yeah, and although I think words. I did come up with one that that's equally wordy and and annoying. <laughs> what which one is it? Uh, willing oneself to forget what cannot otherwise be forgiven. Wow, where uh, which album is that? That's on on uh, that within Blood Ill Tempered. Oh, that's a song. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. Nice. So, do you have a favorite Shy Halud song? Uh yeah, I was expecting you were gonna ask that question. I don't. I have a lot of favorite songs, and it depends on the context. Um, for me, uh the the debut album how it holds a special place in my heart because um that's when i was still a fan of the band and not an active participant or musician in the group so there are a lot of songs on that album that hit very close for me i mean the debut song on that solely concentrating on the negative aspects of life i think is a killer metalcore song probably top three metalcore song of uh, songs of all time yeah um, but i actually really love shia Lude's last album which with Chad Gilbert back on vocals, uh, Reach Beyond the Sun is the is the album. And and that, I think musically, for me, is the best thing they've ever done. Like all everything came together on that album. I feel like the record that I was a part of was this kind of transitional album for Shia Lude where we had a lot of new creative ideas and we were trying to play around with lots of stuff, but it was still very let's say like the results ended up being kind of a mixed bag of really awesome. And some of the stuff now, when I listen to it, I'm like, okay, like it's too much of a good thing sometimes. Yeah. Um, actually I'm reach beyond the sun. I'm pretty sure my dad sung a few lines on that record. Certain cool. songs. I did too. Because yeah, I think, um, I think Chad was all the way in California and he was sending them like, a, uh, just like, as files and they put them on mm -hmm. so i think certain lines uh that they wanted to like replace my dad did some of those oh yeah so like your dad did guest vocals and like they had a few like guest spots yep 
And my dad doesn't awesome. even like, he doesn't like professional singing. He kind of just did it and it sounds good. That's awesome. He's yeah. got a good voice then. Yep. He, uh, he like, the only instrument that he's played in bands is uh, just drums. Okay. Yep. Um, how many bands? One, two, three, four, five? Yeah, five. Because, uh, so My Turn to Win, Let's Die, Accident Prone, The Dividing Line, and Thought Control. Have you ever heard of any of those? No, I haven't. I'm sorry. They, ne they never, uh, they never got super big. I'm actually in Thought Control. I play bass. I like some, I like some of the, some of the, 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 the band names though. Yeah. I heard um, your band's demo. Your band's demo sounds awesome. Thank you. Yeah. World of Chaos. It'll be out on Bandcamp like a few months probably. You have a good voice. Thank you. Um, You do too. Thank you. Yeah. So are you excited to play Furnace Fest this year? Yes. I'm very excited. Yeah. I'm, it's, a, it's pretty cool that you're going to get to play the last one. Right. Yeah, I I wasn't actually aware of the context, but um, I I I kind of gathered from it from the subtitle being the end of an era, and uh, I kind I kind of missed that they started back up after COVID to do this, bring it back to life, and do the do this as a series. And um, yeah, I'm very grateful to to be able to go back there and and uh play the well, I guess by the time that we play, it'll be the twenty first year anniversary of uh, that within blood old tempered with the uh with the whole album lineup with tony and matt and and matt fox and myself and uh, and we have our good buddy eric Dillon joining also his close friend so i think it'll be uh, lots of fun and um it was actually uh, it was my idea i reached out to everybody asking if everybody wanted to do a reunion show and then uh and then matt fox was like i think we should do it at furnace fest and then everybody was in yeah it's pretty cool yeah so when do you think like the last time you sung with uh Shai Halud was? Probably the Japan tour, and I don't remember the year. 2009? 2011? Nice. I don't know. No, it must have been 2009. Yeah. Yeah, that's sick. Long time ago. Yep. I went to Japan earlier this year in January. Uh uh Sick of It All was playing. Mm -hmm. And we were like, okay, let's just see how much tickets are. So we went, uh, and it was only like seven hundred bucks round trip somehow. Wow, which is crazy. Cool. Yeah, and that that was from uh, Los Angeles, so we had to pay like two hundred bucks to get to there. But we had it was on Spirit Airlines, and we had points because we have like a credit card for them. Mm -hmm. Yep, and we, you know, we got an amazing deal, and <laughs> we got to see sick of it all, and we also just got to go to Japan. Yeah, that's win -win. how long how long were you in Japan for? Like four days, right? Yeah. Not bad. Yeah, very fun. Pretty, pretty cool, pretty cool trip. Japan's awesome. Uh so did you ever live in the US? Yeah, I've lived in the US a few times. Um the first time was uh, as an exchange student when I was 17. Uh, I had graduated high school in the Netherlands and then uh, I had the summer off. And then after the summer in September, um, I flew over to the States and uh, I started uh, a senior year in high school, like another senior year, but as an exchange student. That's and cool. so I started in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And then um, around Christmas time, like at the end of that year, I, I changed host families and I ended up moving to a suburb of Chicago called Wheaton. And so I did a, the rest of my school year uh in in wheaton illinois so i lived very close outside of chicago and went to hardcore punk shows in chicago went to the fireside bowl i saw ignite and uh, uh i saw sick of it all in, in at the metro with uh afi opening up for them um i didn't yeah. I went to a bunch of shows this was like yeah. super early super early afi I, st I still have the cd i bought it directly from the band it was cool F afi is like huge now yeah, yeah, yeah. This is all, but this is, they were just like a band starting to, you know, break through and play their first shows. They, yeah, they like, didn't have a whole thing going, this whole goth thing going that they have now. And they weren't so pop yet. They were kind of more of a pop punk band at the time. Yeah. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm really good friends with uh, Pete from Sick of It All's Daughter. We play like Minecraft and Roblox 
all the time. Oh, cool. We just play like video games. Nice. Pretty fun. We have like a we just have like a friend group and we always like stay up till like two AM just uh playing video games. It's really fun. Nice. My son is the same age as you, and he loves Minecraft as well. Nice. Yeah, Minecraft is awesome. You can just like think about it, like you can just kind of build whatever if you want. Like there's like a sandbox mode and there's also just Yeah. like survival, which is and they're both really fun. I know all about it. I watch my son play Minecraft all the time. So, and, and uh, he's currently a little bit more into soccer and uh, plays more FIFA and stuff, but uh, he spent years and years playing Minecraft. And uh, yeah, I, li I like that game. It's cool. Yeah. Is uh he coming is he coming uh with you to Furnace West? No, none of my kids uh, are, are coming to the show. It's uh, kind of in the middle of or at the start of their school year. And Um uh, no, it's not convenient. But uh, Yeah. hopefully we get to play another show in Europe sometime with this lineup. And then, uh, of course, I'll make sure that they're all there to see it. Yeah, possibly. Hopefully, that'd be very cool. Yeah. Hey guys, this is Gabe. Check out the three songs my band World of Chaos just released. They're available on Spotify and everywhere else you stream music. Also, worldchaos.bandcamp.com. Now back to the podcast. So have you sang for any other bands besides Shai Hulu? Yeah. After Shy Elude, I um uh, joined uh so I, I moved back to the Netherlands to the city of Groningen, which is up north. And um uh I joined a metalcore thrash metal band from there. Uh and at the time they were called The Architect. Um and it was right around the time that there was like another band called Mouth of the Architect, and around the time that Architects Uh, we're starting to tour, and in fact, we played a show with Mouth of the Architect and Architects. Uh, we played a couple shows with those guys, and it was like Yeah. full. It was like all architects, you know, like uh, all these names. So that was eventually Like. why we changed the name. So I played in that band for two, three years, and we toured. And uh, actually, we 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 ended up playing some shows with Shyloo together later, uh, on a European tour, um. And then uh, that was the last heavy band that I did uh, where I was on vocals. I had some recording projects with friends, but where that's where I was playing guitar. I wasn't doing anything screaming wise. And after that, I was singing in a band called uh, The Black Atlantic and later also had a band called Black Oak. But that was singing, like singing, singing, folk songs, guitar, full band stuff. So none of the heaviness. Yep. Um, what would you change the name of the architect to? Miscreants. Oh, what's that mean? Outcast outfit, like people who are who are not really part of uh, the the majority, the mainstream. Yep, society. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Hey, cool name. So, what was the first American band you got into? Like listening to music. Yeah. Pretty much. Um. Band or artist? Either, either or. Michael Jackson. Nice. Because yeah, he was he was huge all over. Yeah, Michael Jackson was my first. I'm still a huge fan. I love Michael Jackson. So that was the first American pop artist that I was completely obsessed with. Um, And then, you know, I started discovering other types of music. And uh, I think I got really into Guns N' Roses. That was like the heaviest thing that I could find. This is much later, obviously. And then I went from Guns N' Roses to Metallica, and I never looked back. So Matt Fox and I share the love of older Metallica. I love Metallica, especially the first few albums were like really important to me. Yeah, the I don't I'm not a huge fan of the like newer Metallica, just primarily like first I don't know four albums because it's uh Kill 'em All, Ride the Lightning, Master of Puppets, and Injustice for All, right? Yeah, I also love the Black Album. I think uh, the Black Album is phenomenal as well. Yeah, So I, that I can go all the way to that one, and then um, and then I I bow out. yeah the Black Album tour in the, uh. in the US. That was my mom's first show. Oh yeah. Yeah. St. So St. Louis or uh Southern Illinois. Uh oh. I'm I was jealous. about your age. Yeah. I'm jealous. I still have never seen Metallica live. Yeah. I'm not, I never have either.
and you never will. <laughs> Probably not because like a million dollars now. Oh man, yeah. Not actually, but like it's crazy high. Yeah, a lot of people want to see him. And they like sell out stadiums. It's nuts. Exactly. So, so what was the first uh punk hardcore metal show you attended, and how old were you? It was a punk show. I was fourteen, maybe. And I went to go see Lagwagon, and they had this uh, Swedish band opening up for them called Randy. And uh, I stage dived and did everything. It was a freaking awesome show. Pretty cool. Um, what What's your favorite place in the world you played a show in? Um, I guess I will say Sardinia. I played a really special show there one day uh, with... Um, with my my folk band um so i'm picking that one because it was the most unique show that i've ever played it was on the beach uh at sundown and um in a secret location with about 100 people there uh, and i can't really reveal much more about it because it's kind of a secret i you can't you're not allowed to call it a festival but it's a secret event with lots of people who were like part of this community a few hundred of people and uh, That was one of the my more memorable shows. I've done a few that are that are special, so Yeah. I'll I'll go with that one. So is Sardinia a city? Because that's not a country, right? Sardinia is an island off the coast of Italy. Okay, so it's but it's in Italy, right? Yeah, it's off. It's in the Mediterranean Sea, and it's off the coast of Italy. Okay, is it owned by Italy? Oh, it's part of the country. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I thought you meant it was it was a country, and I was like, oh, I can think. Yeah, I. No, I know about Slovenia and Slovakia. But Right. Yeah. No, Sardinia is an island off the coast of Italy. Yeah. Maybe I should have said Sardinia, Italy. Maybe that would have clarified it right away. maybe, yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, what's the strangest thing you've ever eaten? Uh, fish testicles. Wow. Okay. I didn't know they served those. I didn't know either until I ate them and I asked what I was eating and then they told me and I was like, oh, OK. So where'd you eat that in? Japan. Wow, makes sense. Was it good though? No, it was horrible. It was absolutely disgusting. And I, if I ever, ever am served that food again, I will pass and and thank thank them for the opportunity. Yeah, I know. I know. Like in some places in the U.S., like Texas and Colorado, I think they uh serve bull testicles. Yeah, I will pass on that too. There's, I, I'm not afraid of of food. I've eaten lots of different kinds of food, but uh, I think I'll leave the testicles alone. Okay. <laughs> so if you could be any animal in the world for 24 hours without risk of being uh, killed, what would you choose? Jellyfish. That could be kind of cool. Just like floating, just like chilling there. They don't have a brain. Yeah. I'd like to experience what it's like to not have a brain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, But still. I wonder. See, are they like, are they sentient? That's debatable. It depends on your definitions of uh, of uh, sentience. Do they, are they like, I don't know, can they like, I don't know, can they uh, think at all? I don't think so, which is why I find that animal so so. So unique. Uh, my daughter, I have a 14 year old daughter. She did um, a research project on them uh, for school. And then she she explained all this stuff about jellyfish. And then I was just completely baffled by by this creature, which has survived through hundreds of millions of years. Right. There, there were jellyfish at the times of, of dinosaurs and et cetera. So It's so crazy. they go back forever. So this is really interesting that 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 life without consciousness which i guess is debatable but i would say life without consciousness is possible and that's really that's an interesting thing to think about Maybe they're just like, could they, could they be similar to mushrooms? Cause mushrooms are like, they don't have brains, but they're like, I know somehow they communicate through like waves. yeah i think that's different from jellyfish 
but they're um it seems that uh, they are capable of reading uh, electromagnetic fields yeah um people have actually like taken mushrooms and hooked them up to synthesizers and like it makes it like makes some crazy like beep boop boop like some crazy like stuff <laughs> The mushrooms can also communicate over over hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles of of ground because of the because of the um the tendrils that are all connected so they're yeah. very, very uh, another unique you know sp species that uh that the earth has which uh which it, which i would say is conscious in its own way yeah but it's probably not too like far off from jellyfish because they both don't have brains. Yeah, it's an interesting parallel to draw, is for yeah. sure. Yeah, jellyfish are very cool. I've never like made that connection, but yeah, jellyfish are super super weird, and they just look cool. Yeah, they do. It yeah, I think it it'd be fun to not have a brain for a second and just like relax. I don't think you would remember anything, right? Yeah, you, you wouldn't. wouldn't. You would just like have a day of chill. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, for all for all I know, I could have I could have been a jelly I could have been a jellyfish like before I was born or something. Who knows? Maybe 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 you were a jellyfish. Yeah, maybe. So, what was your favorite American TV show when you were my age? Dinosaurs. Have I ever watched that? Yeah, I don't think I've ever watched it. Is, I assume it's about dinosaurs. Yeah, it's it's uh puppets and uh it's like a Flintstones type family, you know, or or the Simpsons type family with like a a blue collar dad working a job and a mom and kids and they just go through life and uh you know any any anyone who who watched that TV show when they were eleven twelve uh in the nineties uh, like yeah. I did. They'll remember the famous uh, a slogan, which the which the, the little baby dinosaur constantly, yeah. there you go, that's it. And then the little baby would whack the dad and say, not the mama. And and, and it's funny mommy. because when I became a, a father for the third time, uh, my youngest daughter, Ada, in the beginning when she was very young, she actually did this to me. So she would go, not you. <laughs> if I would try to like come and like pick her up, so she'd be like, no, not you. Because <laughs> she wanted her mom to to pick her up. So, so I had some dinosaur flashbacks from that. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, so if you could tell your 12 year old self anything at all, what would you tell him? Stay soft. Don't allow the world to make you hard. Stay in touch with your emotions. Develop more empathy, not less. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of pressure on boys your age. And I know this because I have a son who's your age. There's a lot of pressure on boys to, you know, man up or toughen up or like disconnect from their their sensitive and vulnerable side and it does so much harm and uh i'm i've been working on fixing that for the past couple of years when i became more aware of how much damage i had done to myself and how much damage i had sustained in my life by not being vulnerable and not opening myself up to other humans and which is why i think I had such a deep sense of um, understanding of Shia Lute's lyrics because there's a layer to Shia Lute's lyrics that stems from an incredible amount of pain and anxiety, depression, possibly, probably all those things. Yeah. Um, but it's, but but the language is that of empowerment and anger and hatred, right? Um, but what it truly is about, I think, is about the human condition and dealing with other human beings and being vulnerable and getting hurt. And um, so when I, what I would tell my 12-year-old self, which was 
when I was that age, I started going to high school, uh, would be to, to stay open, to stay vulnerable, to allow yourself to feel hurt, to allow yourself to feel all the emotions. Crying is not a weakness. Feeling pain is not a weakness. Feeling is not a weakness. So rather than dissociating from your feelings, own them and and allow them. And when you do, then you can lead a much more full life later and you can be a much better adult. That's probably one of the most like wisest words anyone's ever said on this podcast. Well, I appreciate that, but that's I, I spend a lot of time thinking about that. And so, you know, I think it's perfectly I think it's isn't isn't June men's health mental health month or something I think it is, is. It? I, I know it's I know it's also pride month yeah I think it's also I think it's both um yeah. and and I think the, there's parallels between those two things as well but um mental health I think is uh is still something that a lot of people there's a lot of um um shame there for people to say i'm in therapy or i am getting support or i'm in need of help with these things and actually i think a lot of people don't even realize that that the things that they do on a daily basis are sometimes not helping them okay so uh will anything add for wrap it up no thanks for you know giving me a chance giving me your questions and and taking an interest and uh uh, good luck with the podcast. Thank you. Um, good luck on the set in at Furnace Fest. I'm excited for it. I'm gonna give it 100 percent energy. Yep, I'll see it. Um, so thanks to Geert for joining me today, and thanks to all of you for watching and listening. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel or follow me on Spotify and other streaming platforms. Until next week, bye.